for dear students for today we will solve the dct for 2021 a question paper and we'll see the core subject or questions so let's start with the first question the first question is the auxiliary voltage commutation circuit consists of options are unijunction transistor ujt bipolar transistor bjt field effect transistor fet inductor capacitor and auxiliary thyristor now here in the a question it is asked voltage commutation circuit that is a a circuit which is going to turn off the scr and in that we have also used a word as auxiliary so there will be one more scr or thyristor which we will be using so one will be the main thyristor or main scr and another one will be a auxiliary thyristor or auxiliary scr which when turns on can make the main scr off so that is what the process will go and we'll be using a commutating elements like inductor and capacitor in this auxiliary voltage commutation circuit so here option d will be the right answer that is the auxiliary voltage commutation circuit consists of inductor a capacitor and auxiliary thyristor so here if you see this is the circuit now in this circuit we can see we are having a main scr so this is a main scr which is named as t1 this is main scr or main thyristor you can call and this will be the auxiliary scr or auxiliary thyristor auxiliary thyristor or auxiliary scr okay so along with this we'll be using a capacitor c and inductor l here okay so here when the a capacitor is initially initially charged it will be charged as plus minus and then the main scr will start working start a conducting if you give a trigger pulse and after that when you want to turn off you can trigger the auxiliary scr when this is triggered the a capacitor will change its polarities and this polarity will become reverse polarity for the main thyristor and the main thyristor can be turned off which is called as commutation so the auxiliary scr or auxiliary thyristor is used to turn off the main scr so here the a concept goes to tell that t1 is the main thyristor that is required to be commutated while tx is an auxiliary thyristor which is a part of the external circuitry that turns off the device however the circuit also includes elements such as a capacitor diode and inductor combinedly that operate to perform the a commutation of the main thyristor so here we can see that the auxiliary voltage commutation circuit consists of option d is the right answer inductor a capacitor and auxiliary thyristor and then we'll go to the next question question number 2 a four quadrant chopper is dash options are class a class b class c and class e now here if you remember what is a chopper chopper is a device which converts fixed dc to variable dc due to the unidirectional conduction of diodes the operation of ideal chopper is restricted to certain quadrants of the output a current voltage plane accordingly choppers are classified as single quadrant chopper two quadrant chopper or four quadrant chopper so here if you see the options option 1 is class a so in class a the graph when you draw of voltage and current so here we have to take y axis as voltage y axis as voltage and x axis as current so for class a it will be first quadrant first quadrant that is positive voltage and positive current similarly when we see class b class b works in the second quadrant so class b works in the second quadrant that is if you draw a graph of voltage versus current you can see class b is going to work in second quadrant okay uh, that is minus i and plus b okay then if you go to see class c class c works in first and second quadrant class c works in first and second quadrant okay so this is will be the first and second quadrants in which the class c works 
whereas class E works in all the four quadrants. So if you see the graph of class C operation, then it will work for all the four quadrants. So if you take here, x-axis as current and y-axis as voltage, this is minus current, this is minus voltage, then this will show all the four quadrants, one, two, three, four. So here one, two, three, four. So this is a class C operation. So here class E will be the right answer, which is a four quadrant chopper. So here you can see class E chopper, that is type E chopper. And here you may be, we have also shown the graph for the four quadrants. So this is the first quadrant. This is second quadrant. This is third quadrant. And this is fourth quadrant. This is your plus I naught. Okay. Now here you can see if you operate the thyristor number one and thyristor number two, the current is going to flow like this like this and the voltage will be plus minus similarly if you operate thyristor number three and thyristor number four then the current is going to flow like this and it will have voltage as minus plus that means current and voltage that is output voltage will be positive and also will be negative and output current will be positive and also will be negative so we can draw the graph in the all four quadrants so it is a four quadrant chopper so here a four quadrant chopper is dash that is class E. So option D will be the right answer. Then we'll go to the next question. Question number three, the dash circuit converts fixed DC input voltage into a variable AC voltage. So we have studied the circuits like rectifiers, which will convert AC to DC, AC to DC. Then we have studied choppers, which will convert DC to DC that is fixed DC to variable DC. Then we have inverters which will convert DC to AC. And then we have cyclo converters which will convert AC into variable AC. Now in this question it is asked that which is the circuit which will convert DC into AC. So it will be option C that is inverters. Inverter circuit converts DC input voltage to variable AC output voltage. So here we can have option C as the answer. Then we'll go to the next question, question number four. In dash method, armature voltage is kept constant and field current is varied to control speed of DC motor. Now options are option A, armature control method. Option B, field or control method. Option C, frequency control method. And option D, time control method. Now in these four methods, which is the method in which armature voltage is kept constant and field current is varied. Okay. Now here we can vary the speed of the DC motor by armature control method and also by field control method. Now in these two methods, the field control method is one. It is achieved for achieving speed of the control motor above the base speed. And in this field control method, the armature voltage is kept constant and the field current is varied. Okay, so here, if you want to keep the armature voltage constant and vary the field current, then that method of controlling the speed of DC motor is called as field control method. So option B will be the right answer here. So field control method is the right answer. So here, if you see the our concept field control method, when using the field control method for DC motors, the field is weakened to increase the speed or it can be strengthened to reduce the motor speed. Attaining speeds that are above the rated speed can be achieved by providing variable resistance in series to the field circuit, varying the reluctance of the magnetic circuit, or by varying the applied voltage of the motor to the field circuit, with constant voltage being supplied to the armature circuit. So for this question, option B will be the right answer. That is, it is a field control method in which we keep the armature voltage constant and vary the field current. Then we'll go to the next question, question number five. Devices used to a control electrical signal from programmable logic controller, that is PLC, into physical condition. Now we know that whenever we work with PLC, this is a PLC and it will be having its inputs. Now this is your PLC CPU. Uh, it will be having its input, which will come from input devices 
which are sensors. Sensors are one which will convert physical parameter into electrical signal. And then after the execution, the PLC will give its output, which is an electrical signal, and that should be converted into physical parameter or some operation have to take place. And for that, we require actuators, actuators at the output. Okay. So here in the question, it is asked that devices used to control electrical signal from programmable logic controller PLC into physical condition. So from PLC, if you want to go to physical condition, from this, if you want to go to physical condition, that is electrical signal is been a given a, a command with, and that electric signal will actuate, and actuator will give the physical condition, physical application. So it is the actuator which is going to work for it. Okay, so option C will be the right answer here. Actuators. Devices to control electrical signal from PLC into physical condition are actuators. So here option C is the right answer, that is actuators. Then we'll go to the next question, question number six. Line commutation method is employed in, okay. So the options are cycloconverters, class A chopper, class B chopper and inverters. Now in this, the circuits which we use for cycloconverters and the SCRs which we use in the cycloconverter operation to convert AC into a variable AC. So there we turn off the SCRs by the natural commutation method, that is the line commutation method. So line commutation method is employed in cycloconverters. So option A, cycloconverters will be the right answer. So here you can see cycloconverter is the right answer. Then we'll go to the next question, question number seven. In De Morgan's theorem, complement of a product of two variables is equal to what? Now, in De Morgan's theorem, we know that complement of a product of two variables. So now say if the variables are A and B, so we can write it complement of a product of two variables. So complement of product, product is A into B. This is the complement. Okay. Now, according to De Morgan's theorem, this will be equal to the sum of individual complements, that is A bar plus B bar, okay. So here, if this is the answer, then out of these four options, we can see the option A is sum of two variables, so it is not sum of two variables. Uh, option B is product of individual complements, complements. Option C is sum of individual complements, so it is the sum of individual complements. This is this is the sum of individual complements. So option C is the right answer here. So in De Morgan's theorem, complement of product of two variables is equal to sum of individual complements of variables. So here you can see option C is the right answer, sum of individual complements of variables. Then we'll go to the next question. Question number eight, the number of inputs and outputs in a full adder. Okay. Now, if you remember the full adder circuit, so in full adder circuit, we had the block as say, this is full adder. This was full adder circuit. And in full adder, we had input A, input B, and one more input, which will be called as carry in. And the output was sum S and carry out, C out. So a full adder circuit, if you see, it will be having three inputs and two output. So there are three input and two outputs. So here out of this option, you can see option B is three input and two output. So number of inputs and outputs in a full adder are three input and two output. So option B is the right answer. So option B is three input and two output. Then we'll go to the next question, question number nine. In a 8 is to 1 multiplexer, the number of inputs and select inputs are. Okay. Now, when we say 8 into 1 multiplexer, so automatically the number of inputs will be 8. So, we are going to convert 8 inputs. Okay. So, if, if you are having 8 is to 1 multiplexer, so you will be having 8 inputs 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, these are 8 inputs. So, we will be having eight inputs okay and eight is to one means one output will come okay 
so which of this input will be selected as the output whether the input 0 is selected as the output whether the input 1 is selected as the output whether the input 2 is selected as the output whether the input 3 is selected as the output 4 5 6 7 which is selected output now that depends on the select inputs now to select seven combinations we require uh, three select inputs that is 2 raised to 3 is equal to 2 into 2 4 into 2 8 that means 0 to 7 that means we can start from 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 till your 1 1 1 which will be the eight combinations and therefore we require three select lines we require three select lines we can name them as s0 s1 s2 so it will be three select lines and eight input lines so here in the option if you see in a 8 is to 1 multiplex so the number of inputs and select inputs are option d is the right answer eight inputs and three select inputs so option d is the right answer here eight inputs and three select inputs then we'll go to the next question question number 10 the universal gates are so we have studied our uh, universal gates as NAND and NOR gates after we have st studied the basic logic gates and or not and then we studied NAND and NOR and we saw that with NAND and NOR we could build up any other gate so NAND and NOR were called as universal gates so here the option the universal gates are NAND and NOR gates so option C will be the right answer here NAND and NOR gates are called as universal gates because we using these gates we can build any other gate then we'll go to the next question question number 11 in sequential logic circuits the output depends on now when we studied digital electronics we studied two types of circuits one was combinational circuit and one was sequential circuit in a combinational circuits whatever the combination of input at that present time that only will give you the output whereas in sequential logic circuit the present input and a feedback that is a past output will give you the present output so here in sequential logic circuit the output depends on only present inputs no only past inputs no both are present inputs and past outputs. so you are getting a feedback and also the present inputs that will decide the present output so here this is the correct answer so option c will be the right answer both present inputs and past output so here you can see both present input and past output are used in sequential logic circuits to give the output then we'll go to the next question a 4 bit shift register comprises of 4 delay flip flops 4 toggle flip flops 5 delay flip flops and 5 toggle flip flops so if it is a 4 bit shift register so in that we have to use 4 flip flops okay? and in shift register we use delay flip flops that is d flip flops so here the option A will be the right answer for delay flip-flops. Then we can see the theory for it. A shift register basically consists of several single bit D type data latches. One for each data bit, either a logic zero or a one are connected together in a serial type daisy chain arrangement so that the output from one data latch becomes the input to the next latch and so on. So here option A will be the right answer a 4 bit shift register comprises of 4 delay that is the D flip flops 4 delay flip flops then we'll go to the next question which of the following statements is not correct about a synchronous counter now in a synchronous counter there is no synchronous timing okay that means a clock is not given simultaneously to each flip flop okay so that will be the asynchronous one whereas in synchronous counter we give the same clock simultaneously to all the flip flops so here if you see the options option a is simple design compared to synchronous counter option b is all flip flops are triggered with same clock simultaneously option c is also called as ripple counter option d is a propagation delay is more compared to synchronous counter so which of the statements is not correct so if you see the not correct statement then statement B is not correct because this is used for synchronous counter, not for asynchronous counter. So here all flip-flops are triggered with the same clock simultaneously. This is used in case of synchronous counter, not in asynchronous counter. So for asynchronous counter, 
it is a not correct statement. So here you can see option B that is all flip flops are triggered with same clock simultaneously is the not correct statement for a synchronous counter. Then we'll go to the next question, which is not a type of RAM. So here options are S RAM, that is static RAM. Then we have P ROM, a programmable ROM, then D RAM or dynamic RAM and then SD RAM. So here out of this option B is read only memory. So it is not a RAM, it is ROM. It is a programmable ROM that is read only memory. So which is not a type of RAM is option B that is PROM that is programmable read only memory is not a type of RAM. So here we can have option B as the right answer. Then we'll go to the next question. A microwave oven uses electromagnetic wave technology and frequency of. Okay, now when we studied microwave oven and in that we have generated microwave energy with the help of magnetron and the electronic and the electromagnetic wave which was produced had a frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. So here out of these options, option B will be the right answer that is 2.4 gigahertz. So here option B 2.4 gigahertz is used. This is the frequency which is used by the microwave energy in the microwave oven. So here you can see option B that is 2.4 gigahertz is the right answer. Then we'll go to the next question, question number 16. In automobile, electronic engine control is used for what? Options are maximizing the speed of the vehicle, minimizing the vibration of the engine, minimizing the size of the engine, minimizing exhaust emissions and maximizing fuel economy. So option D is the right thing because of electronic control, the engine will give minimum exhaust emissions and maximum fuel economy. So here option D will be the right answer. So here you can see in automobile, electronic engine control is used for minimizing exhaust emissions and maximizing fuel economy. Then we'll go to the next question. Microphone sensitivity typically measured with one kilohertz sine wave at a dash sound pressure level. So this uh, we have studied. So here one kilohertz sine wave. So for a one kilohertz sine wave at a 94 decibel sound pressure level, we have microphone sensitivity typically measured. Okay, that means microphone sensitivity typically measured with one kilohertz sine sine wave at a 94 decibel sound pressure level. So option A will be the right answer here, 94 decibel. So here we can see the a concept, the sensitivity of the microphone. The sensitivity of the microphone is determined by measuring the output voltage at a given sound pressure. It is measured in volts. It is measured with one kilohertz sine wave at a 94 decibel sound pressure level. So here option A that is 94 decibel is the right answer. Then we'll go to the next question. In a color TV transmission, the luminance signal Y, that is the brightness signal Y, is a combination of RGB, but what is the percentage of RGB? So we know that when we studied a color TV, we know that the a combination of RGB to produce a brightness signal or the luminance signal Y is 30% red, 59% green, and 11% blue. So it is 0.3 R. 0.59 G and 0.11 B. So option A is the right answer here. And option A we can see as 0.3 R, 0.59 G and 0.11 B. So here you can see luminance information. The monochrome luminance Y signal is derived from RGB. It is given as Y is equal to 0.3 R plus 0.59 G plus 0.11 B. So here option A is the right answer. So RGB, red, green, blue. So R will be 30%, green will be 59% and blue will be 11%, which will give the luminance signal that is the brightness information in a color TV system. Then we'll go to the next question, question number 19. A Thevenin network is given by, options are a current source in series with resistance, voltage source in parallel with resistance, voltage source in series with resistance, current source in parallel with resistance. Out of these options, option C is the right answer. That is voltage source in series with resistance. This is what the Thevenin's network will give. 
So here, Pathavalin's theorem, when we studied, Pathavalin's theorem is an analytical method used to change a complex circuit into a simple equivalent circuit consisting of a single resistance in series with the source voltage. So it is a single resistance in series with a source voltage. So here option C, that is voltage source in series with resistance is the right answer. Then we'll go to the next question. A RLC circuit is said to be resonant if it has. So if you are remember the RLC circuit, so we'll have R, L and C circuit. Okay. And this will be excited with a AC supply of certain frequencies. Now here, this is R, this is L, this is C, and this is your input voltage. So it, this will be the AC voltage. Now here, at a different frequencies, when you attune the circuit, the current starts flowing, and the current will have an opposition from R, it will be having a reactance opposition from L, and it will be having reactance opposition from C. So opposition by L is given as XL, and opposition by C is given as XC. Now, when XL and XC are equal and opposite, they will cancel out each other. When they are equal and opposite, they cancel out each other. And what opposition remains in the circuit is opposition by only resistance R. Now, that happens at a particular frequency, which will be called as resonant frequency. Okay, so that means at resonant frequency F0, we should have the reactance of inductance should be equal and opposite to reactance of capacitance. So this is the condition is one where we get series resonance. So here option C will be the right answer. XL is equal to XC is the right answer. So option C is the answer for RLC circuit to be resonant. So here you can see option C that is reactance of inductance is equal to reactance of capacitance. This is the condition when only the resistance will be the opposition to the flow of current in the circuit and the opposition by inductor and capacitance will get cancelled and we'll have a maximum current flowing in the circuit at that particular frequency. So it is said to be it is resonant at that particular frequency. Thank you students.